Hi, hello, welcome. Uh, this is sort of a supplementary video to my uh, scores for the 2017 Mappers versus Machines mapping contest. Um, I'm going to be going over all of the maps that I at least played enough to actually like have an opinion on. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to play all of the maps, and the ones that I did play, I didn't necessarily play as much as I wanted to. Um, so I'm going to be going over the maps that I did actually score, and I will be going over some of the maps that I did not actually score, but I, I wanted to talk about them anyways, um, uh, usually over over the aesthetics of them, because I, I thought there was something worthwhile talking about uh, in, in that regard. Um, this video, I am producing this literally all in one day, so uh, it's going to be a little rough around the edges. I'm probably going to say some, stif su some stuff that doesn't make any sense. I'm going to stumble over myself a lot because I'm not taking the time to, to, to redo lines as much as I, I really should. Uh, and also, I'm going to be reusing clips a lot because I ended up recording, like, I don't know, two minutes of, of footage. And then I ended up talking for five minutes. So it, it shows the same viewpoint over and over. It really doesn't matter. Uh, the point gets across anyways. I just wanted to apologize for the quality of this video because it's not really where I want it to be. Uh, with all of that said, uh, I'm going to be going through all of the maps that I do have something to say about um, in, in alphabetical order. Hopefully. Hopefully I don't mess that up. Um, and, and then the video will be over after that happens. So... Uh, on to the first map. So starting us off is Affinity, which is a map that I found pretty enjoyable, um, but it, it also has some flaws in it, and it has a lot of potential. There's a lot of stuff that I think could be fixed relatively easily. The, the layout of it, um, the front of the map is good. It's enjoyable, which is really important because you end up spending a lot of time there. Uh, the, the hatch is very open. There's not a lot of cover. There's like one wall off to the right, and beyond that, it's pretty much just open sight lines. So if if the bots coming towards you are hit scan like a whole bunch of heavies, uh, there's not much you can do about it. it. It's very easily very easy to get swarmed. Um, the biggest problem with the map is the middle, and I, this has to do with how the two routes relate to each other. At least the two routes that the bots seem to take. I don't know if the routes they were taking were the intended routes, because uh, the, the map does have some navigation uh, technical issues. So there's an upper route and a lower route, and I have a little uh, video up here going of the, the two routes comparing to each other in terms of how long it takes to get to the hatch. And the upper route is notably shorter than the, the lower route, or at least the lower route that the bots were taking. Um, and this is an issue because the upper route is naturally going to be more difficult for players because it gives the bots a height advantage, or rather it, it takes away height advantages from the players. The players will be standing on that upper route, shooting down onto robots if they take the lower route. And in other maps, you would balance this out by making the upper route considerably longer than the lower route, but the, the opposite ends up being true here, where the upper route is not only going to be naturally more difficult for players because of height differences, but it also ends up being more difficult because it's just a shorter route. Um, and also, it's it's a very uh, linear route. There's not a whole lot of cover for players to take advantage of. Uh, so what ends up happening is that the map is a lot more fun to play if the bots take the lower route. If the bots take the upper route, you're in for a more difficult time. And that's just the way it is. Um, I think part of this, again, is because of the layout. And part of it is because of the technical issues of the bots just taking the wrong routes. Uh, there's also a couple of reset zones. Uh, the lower route has very direct access to a death pit. Whereas the upper route, you can knock them off of the upper route onto the lower route, and then they will take a very circuit circuitous... They take a long route uh, to get back up to the high area to continue onwards. And I suppose that is a way of sort of balancing the two routes out, um, but it is such a... That's such a specific thing that you have to be able to take advantage of in order for the, the, the routes to be quote-unquote, balanced with each other. And I suspect that if you did that, they they still wouldn't really be balanced. As for the aesthetics of the map, um, it was really... I like what it's going for, but I don't think it's quite there. And I think it has to do with the overall mood of the map. First of all, it's it's kind of a rainy and dark atmosphere, like, like Sawmill, um, or a little bit like Borneo. Borneo is kind of a bright map, but it has that same general overcast lighting where there's not really any strong shadows coming from the sun. Um, so it has dark lighting and then you combine that with how the, the rocks and the ground are all dark textures and all of the Mayan stones and all of those, that, that 
that prop set. All of that stuff is also dark. And then there's the spy tech component, which is literally just black. Um, and all of those individual components, I think, look nice and could make a nice theme together. But you put all of them together and you end up with a, a map that's really not visually interesting. There's not any, there's nothing that breaks that dark monotony to actually really grab your eye. All of it is just kind of dark and bland and uninteresting. So there's, I think there's a number of things you could do. You could change the atmosphere of the map. I suspect you don't want to do that because you want to keep that sort of dark and rainy atmosphere. Uh, you could you could work with the lighting a bit more. So there, there's a whole bunch of spotlights around the map that are, that are shining light onto the map. And I suspect that's supposed to provide the visual interest, but the lights I don't think are bright enough to actually do that. If your lights are at like 600 to 800 brightness, I would I would suggest bringing them up to like 1200, 800, 2400, and so on. Like really, really bright values on spotlights don't actually cast as much light as you think. 2400 is not a ridiculous number uh, for, for a spotlight that's trying to flood an area. And you can also add a lot of accents to the spy tech. All of it is completely black. Maybe you do black framing, but then you have like red or, or white panels um, within that framing, and that provides your visual interest. You could also do a lot with like framing the inside of the cave, um, and that that might provide some visual interest. I'm just kind of throwing out ideas. I don't really know what you would want to do, uh, but there's a number of ways that you could provide that visual interest that your overall aesthetic isn't really providing for you right now. So the next map I want to talk about is Baron. Uh, unfortunately, I did not get to play this map enough to really talk about the layout. Uh, but I did want to talk about the aesthetics of this map um, because a, f a few things stuck out to me. Overall, it's it's rather nice. Um, it it sort of takes the aesthetic of Badlands and just kind of applies it over and over again. Um, it's not necessarily creative in that regard, but it it, it, it does it well. Um, there's not much really to, to complain about in that in that sense. Uh, the one thing that I do want to complain about is, or at least one of the things is how every building is the same wood texture um and i think this is a, like a this comes from being a very literal interpretation of the badlands theme of sorts where if you take a look at badlands there's uh two there's two shacks on either side of mid one of them belongs to red and one of them belongs to blue the red one i believe is made entirely of this the same one wood texture um and then the on the blue side is it's uh, a metal a metal shack um, and so I, I think the, what happened here was the idea was, okay, we want to take Badlands theme, so we're going to take the same textures from Badlands, and this map belongs to red, like it's man versus machine, the players are in red, this is a red-themed map, and everything is a wood shack, so, therefore we go to Badlands, we take the wood textures that were used for the wood shacks, and we only use those, and, and that's how we make it look like Badlands, and I don't think that's necessarily a good way to approach this because badlands has a lot fewer wood shacks um that than than this map does and so what ends up happening is you have a, a sort of a, a cluster of these buildings that all look almost identical to each other and it's it's i don't know that it causes visual problems in terms of gameplay like being able to differentiate buildings from one another because the architecture of it is interesting enough that you can tell one building from another um but it's very monotonous it's not really all that interesting to look at. I take some issue with some of the lighting in this map. Uh, I'm looking at the two buildings towards the front of the map and uh, they are lit with light bulbs. And I, I take issue with this for a couple of reasons, or actually one main reason, and, and that is when you're using a light bulb and you use a point light instead of a spotlight to get sort of like, you know, the lighting that you would actually expect out of a light bulb as opposed to a, a cone lamp is that the brightest point in the room ends up on the ceiling. And this kind of goes against the idea of using lighting to direct the player's eye. The player needs to look at the floor and sort of the walls near the floor because that's where enemies are going to be. They don't need to look at the ceiling. Nothing is up there. And so the what ends up happening is the brightest point in the room is where the players don't care about it at all and the area towards the floor kind of suffers for that. It ends up being a less visually obvious place to look, even though it's really where they should be looking. So there's two options. One of them is to take the light bulb and turn it into a code lamp, and then just do the lighting as you expect. Or you can cheat. 
Um, Valve does this a lot. They cheat with their, their light bulbs. They will use a light bulb prop and they'll put a sprite on it and maybe a very faint point light. Um, but the majority of the lighting from the light bulb is actually a spotlight so that they can just direct all of the light towards the ground for the, the visual interest reasons that I talked about before. Next up on the list is Calico. It's not a great map. It's not awful. I'd say it's probably on the lower side of average uh, in comparison with the, the rest of the contest maps. Uh, but the layout of it, the front area of the map where the bots come in. I think this might be one of the, the better front areas of of the like the entire contest, honestly. Um, it's the strongest part of this entire map. I would appreciate a little bit more cover. Uh, once the bots sort of get around the, the shipping containers and start coming up the ramp, there's not really a whole lot of cover to use, and usually the, the defense kind of falls apart. Um, but overall, it, it, it works pretty well. Um, and the hatch seems okay. We didn't play around the, the hatch very much. Um, the biggest problem with this map is the middle. And specifically with the middle, the problem that I found is that the the different paths that the robots can take vary in, in difficulty for the players. Um, there's a, a, a there's There seem to be four routes. I don't know if any of the routes uh, got like taken out, like the bots just don't take them anymore because they were too difficult or they were too easy or whatever. Um, but there's, uh, there, there's two routes in the middle and there's two to the side, it's sort of like decoy or uh, coal town or, or big rock. And what I found is that the middle bottom route, there, there's two routes in the middle. One of them goes high and one of them goes low. The low route is definitely the easiest one. It's the one that as a player you want the bots to take because it's just going to be the easiest defend. Um, and the other route that I noticed the bots taking a lot was the upper left, like the far left one. Um, and the difference between these two, the upper route is harder to get to as a player. There's less opportunities to get up there and also it's at a height advantage. Um, and it's also very linear, like there's not a whole lot of cover. So getting up there as a player is difficult and actually defending while you're up there is also difficult. And it's also, it seems to be shorter than the routes in the middle. Um, meanwhile, the, the route in the middle, it's at a low ground. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of area for players to stand and look down onto the route. So they have height advantages. They seem to have a decent amount of cover, not a whole lot. And it seems to be longer. So all those things considered, it, it's kind of a dice roll how the, the map plays out because one of the routes is distinctly just kind of better than the rest. And that's a really big problem. As for the aesthetics of the map, uh, it, it's a pretty nice looking map overall. I really like the spawn building and how there's sort of uh, almost like an auditorium shape around the hatch. Uh, I think that's a, a really neat shape and the building is well done. Um, and then there's one building up to the left that's like this white concrete and it, it's got all sorts of, it's a very intricately designed building and it, it looks really nice. Um, a lot of the buildings that you did get around to finishing look nice. Unfortunately, it, it's obviously not finished. Um, but the parts that are the most polished look really good. Um, up towards the front of the map, there's sort of like a, a long bar. It's like an elevated road. Uh, maybe you will be able to justify this road once there's a, a 3D skybox and it's actually like a, a bridge between two areas. But, uh, even then I think it will still look pretty awkward and I would recommend trying to change it into a building. Um, it's just a very odd place for a road you don't really realize that it's a road um from the player's perspective because they, they never really get any higher than that um and plus the space underneath of it doesn't seem like it, i mean it as a road structure it doesn't it doesn't look like a elevated road it looks like a a long bar that happens to have a paved road on top of it and so there's it, it feels weird because it's like, okay, well, what was this thing actually built for? Was it built as a road? Was it built as a building that happens to have a road on top of it? It's really strange. Um, I don't know what you do about it. I, I, personally, I would say you just turn it into a building. Uh, that, that seems like the easiest solution. The last thing to talk about is, of course, the robots. Um, I only played the advanced pop file. I did not play the, the normal the more normal mission. Um the biggest problem that I found was that the map focuses a whole lot on just the giants. Usually the, the like the normal sized robots, sort of sentry fodder and whatnot, didn't really seem to pose much of a threat. Um, 
and maybe part of this is because of how the front is designed and how there's such a, a long distance and how easy it is to just sit on top of that container and spam downwards. Uh, but a, a lot of the map is about sort of focusing giants and just taking them out individually rather than trying to deal with like giants and fodder robots at the same time. Uh, and wave three in particular was one that stuck out to me because it, it went for a very long time. Um, and it was very sort of formulaic. There were almost like no fodder robots. Like the whole thing was just like, okay, here's a giant that has a couple of support in its squad and take it out. And then you do that three or four times and then it moves on to the next giant and squad combination. And you just do that over and over and it's a very slow moving wave and it, and it, and it ends up being really boring because all of the difficulty is derived from making the giant itself really difficult to take out instead of making a giant that's relatively easy to take out but then also providing a whole bunch of fodder robots that then make taking out the giant a more difficult task because there's all these other bots that you have to be aware of and you have to you know you have to think on your feet and make difficult decisions on, on, on how to how to play the map rather than just having one giant target and and figuring out how you take it out before it takes you out Factory. This is a interesting map. Uh, that, that, that sounds like a very hesitant compliment, and it kind of is. It's a map that I appreciate a lot more for what it is trying to do and sort of the, the concept that it proves rather than the map itself. Uh, so the, the layout of this map, it feels like there was this idea. There's a, a conveyor belt that's controlled by a control point, and then uh, holding the control point will turn on the, the conveyor belt and then that gives you an advantage and then if you lose the conveyor belt that gives you a disadvantage and the layout feels like it was sort of a diagram drawn of that idea it doesn't feel like it's a it's trying to be a layout so much as it's trying to be a proof of concept and it it works really well as a proof of concept it proves that the concept works um unfortunately the layout is just it's not that fun. It's not very interesting. It's very symmetrical. I think it might actually be 100% symmetrical, except for like some of the, the pickups or whatever. Um, but it doesn't really completely flesh out some of the, the problems with the concept, like the, the way that the conveyor belt works. And ultimately, the layout just isn't that interesting. Um, so my suggestion is basically to start over, um, which I know isn't necessarily something you want to hear after you've put so much work into a map, but it, it's... Don't think of it as starting over. Think of it as just starting a new map. Uh, this map, I think you've gotten out of it what you're going to get out of it for, for making it, sort of like understanding what the concept is and discovering what the flaws are with the concept. And then you can go on to a, a new map, try the same idea again, but it apply it in a more interesting and thoughtful way. Um, don't be so simplistic with it. There are some specific flaws with the concept that I want to talk about. One of them is, uh, I think, the control point. Having it not be owned at the start of the round and the require players, requiring players to, to go back and, and capture it is kind of a weird way to handle it. I feel like the, the, the player team should just automatically own the control point. Um, and, and not even it shouldn't even be a question. Um, other flaws with the concept, uh, the, the map doesn't really force the robots to go onto the conveyor belt. There's sort of, of spaces to, to either side, and it plays awkwardly because some robots will run directly onto the conveyor belt and stay on it, and others will, will go to the side and ignore it in a way that feels kind of awkward because it's like if a robot was smart, they would just go around the conveyor belt and then only stand on the conveyor belt sort of when, when they when they have to cross over. And sometimes the robots did do that, especially on the, on the second half of the map. Uh, they would run on the path to the side of the conveyor belt rather than running on the conveyor belt itself. Um, one of the other things is that I think you should, if you're doing a new layout with this conveyor belt concept, you should make it in a way that the conveyor belt can only be approached directly like on and off of it in the same direction as the conveyor belt rather than, than coming onto the side, at least specifically for tanks. Um, because the idea of a tank going onto the conveyor belt and then getting slowed down because the conveyor belt's going the opposite way makes a lot of sense. But the, the tank sort of driving onto it sideways and then immediately coming to a halt looks really, really bad. 
And I think the only way you're really going to be able to get around that is if a tank will only drive linearly directly onto the conveyor belt rather than coming from the side. As for the look of the map, I think it's sort of headed in the right direction, but it isn't quite there yet. Um, there's no there's no structure up in the ceiling, which I think is very important for sort of a, a warehouse look. Um, you you need that to be able to sell the the factory theme. Uh, the, the roof truss is like the most important part of the structure. Um, the the big brick walls with the big open windows, it looks right. Um, I think there's sort of more finesse details that you need to add to be able to sell it. But it, I mean, it's it's basically there. Um, the uh, Where the robots come into the map, I think, is the most awkward part. Uh, because there's, there's three robot entrances and they're right at the ground. You can't really tell where the end of the respawn room is. And also you can see the tanks but they're not moving, which is just weird. Like, there's just tanks sort of parked outside. And it's like, why aren't they just coming in all the time? Um, and then also the windows at the top don't really line up with the structure at the bottom. And then the way that structures work, it, it, it's a thing of, like, resolving forces to the ground. When you have something heavy on top, you need you need a path to get that force down to the ground. Um, and there's sort of, like where those three bot entrances are are sort of defining like where columns are and then as those go up those run directly into the windows like the windows and the doors don't really agree with each other on where the structure of the building really is um so it it it, it that's a very technical explanation of why it looks wrong um or at least a very technical reason why it is you know wrong but i, I think that's also an explanation of why it looks wrong um I would suggest that you take the bottom doors, turn them all into shutter doors, and make those uh, exclusively tank entrances, and then you have some windows up at the top that are always open, and that's where the bots come in, and that sort of solves all of your problems at once. Havana is next. This is uh, one of my favorites from the contest. I don't know that it, it's my number one favorite, but I, I would definitely place it in the top three or five. Um, it's a map that I want to come back to and play more um, after the contest. Like, uh, and that that automatically makes it good. It's fun, um, and yeah. So, specifics about the layout. I think the front is good. There's plenty of places for cover. Uh, there's some height advantage, and you know it it works. Uh, the middle of the map. Um, there's two routes. There's one route that sort of goes by where the upgrade station is. I'm gonna call that. I don't know, I'm going to call that main. And then there's the, the other route, which sort of goes around uh, the middle building, and then it, 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 it goes into this like long stretch of road on the side up to the hatch. I'm going to call that alley. Um, I think I enjoy the alley route more than main, uh, the, the, the main route. Um, and part of this has to do with just like, where are the opportunities for cover and height advantage? Um, the alley route offers uh, some height advantage. There's that building in the middle, sort of where the, the two routes split and go around it and then sort of cross each other on the, on the backside of that middle building. Uh, the middle building seems definitely geared more towards being able to defend robots coming from the front into this, into this alley route. Um, for main, sort of once they get around that building, it's rather difficult to, to get a height advantage or any cover. You're sort of you're you're coming out of that that uh, the building with the broken archway column. You're you're coming out of that area, and then your your options are limited. You sort of have to go around them uh, rather than being able to take a, a route that's obviously right in front of you and being able to get a, a, a nice height advantage or covered position on the robots. And then also. On the alley route, once they sort of go onto that that stretch of road coming up into the hatch, um, there's this nice path of height advantage uh, that that looks over the road, um, and that's a, a really nice place to be able to defend from. But like that that back road in general is a a fun gameplay space. Um, the main route I think is kind of lacking. That it has a pretty I think the routes are relatively balanced with each other because the main route has a much more intense choke at that that area with the the broken archway. Um, but I want to say that it's a little bit shorter and also it, it's generally just less interesting to play on because there's 
less opportunities for height advantage and, and cover for players to be able to take advantage of. Also, it, it, I just remembered that there's a reset route. Um, this brings up another point, um, is that the reset route, I always just forget that it exists. Um, and I don't know what you can do about that, but it seems like it's sort of an attempt to, to make that shorter or probably shorter route uh, balance with, with the, the alley route. Um, but I don't think I ever saw it get used. Maybe once. Um, so anything you could do about that, maybe highlighting it better or maybe altering the, the, the scaling of the way out so that it's closer and more obvious, uh, I think that would be a good thing. As for the aesthetics of the map, uh, it's pretty good. Um, the lighting kind of resembles uh, maps that have really yellow lighting, sort of like Gravel Pit. Uh, Gravel Pit's probably a better example, but there, there, there's maps out there that sort of have a very yellow light environment, and it looks like the entire map is just kind of drenched in piss, and it's, it's miserable to look at. This map resembles that, but it ends up still... I mean, it looks nice. Uh, it has a atmosphere to it. It, it isn't it isn't like a miasma that hovers over the map. It, it's sort of a mood. Um, it also, there's a lot of comments about how this map doesn't really look like Cuba, and there's a lot of reasons we've talked about. Like, I, I've talked with the creator specifically about why this didn't really come across, and that's because, like, if you were to make it really look like Havana, Cuba, um, then it would require a lot of detail that you wouldn't really be able to get into a man versus machine map just because of uh, like how much you can realistically render at one time without destroying someone's computer. The thing that I would say, though, is that the, the layout and the detailing, it, it looks like a city. Uh, the layout feels like a city, and that's something that is actually pretty difficult to do. It's rather difficult to make a, a map that isn't just sort of a generic layout that has city detailing applied to all of the walls like this map has streets and and plazas and whatnot it, it feels like a city it's laid out like a city and it's detailed like a city it does it's not necessarily detailed like havana cuba but it looks like a city and that's an accomplishment in itself up next is kelly um uh, kelly is whenever i'm playing a new map I, in my, in my head, I'm comparing it to other man versus machine maps that I've played before, because uh, this can tell me a lot sort of about like, you know, is, is this based on an existing map, but doing something slightly different? Is this, you know, is this like directly copying an existing map? Um, is, is this doing something totally new? It gives, it gives me information about what I can expect from this map, how I might want to play on it and, and, and so on. Um, and when I look at this map, it reminds me a lot of decoy in that there's one entrance, uh, like the, the bots kind of come into this one pit area and go forward. Actually, it resembles Coal Town more in that respect than Decoy. But once it gets out, there's sort of that, that high ground spine in the middle, and then the, the, the paths split off to either side, and then there's two other higher routes that, that come around, and then they all meet up back at the hatch. In comparing this to, to Decoy, it, it feels like you took Decoy, made it bigger, and then you made the uh, the upper two side routes less interesting, and then you made the re you, you made the reset route the uh, the 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 pit underneath the bridges. You you basically made it a lot less useful, um, which kind of makes sense given the the size of the map. But basically, this this feels like a worse version of decoy, and that automatically makes me not want to play it because I would rather just go play decoy. Um, the spine in the middle is pretty difficult to get to, and I, I feel like this has to do with just the overall scale of the map. But if the bots are coming on the left, then I do I do have a ramp that I can walk up to, to get to a height advantage that I can actually use, and that, that, that turns up pretty well. But on, on the right side, I don't really have very many useful places to be other than just kind of waiting behind the corner, waiting for bots to come at me. There's no height advantage there to use. There's no alternative routes. I don't really have very i don't i don't have a lot of choices to make and that makes it a lot less interesting to play also i feel like the the upper two side routes are distinctly more difficult routes than the lower two routes and this has to do with the fact that there's not a lot of uh, there's not a lot of cover up there both in terms of 
uh, blocking sight lines between the players and, and each other, but also in terms of like if a, if a player is in the lower area and the bot's in a higher area, there's not a lot to block the sight lines happening there. And then also the route is wide enough that soldiers can't very effectively spam. If you look at decoy, the routes along the side, and, and this is also true of, of Big Rock and maybe Coal Town, um, the the walls are all kind of close together and the routes are are, are thin so that um, soldiers can spam against the back wall and all that splash damage is going to hit the robots and that sort of that that balances out that route and makes it easier even though it has a height advantage over it um, and, and and so Kelly does not do this and also the the routes are not really that much longer if you look at Coal Town or you look at at, at Decoy. Actually, I don't know about cold time, but you look at decoy and the side routes flare out uh, considerably more um, and, and they, they have to go sort of a, a further distance around into the sides before they, they come to the hatch. Uh, with with Kelly, um, the upper routes don't really seem that they are very much longer than the lower routes. And so all of those factors combine into basically making the upper routes distinctly less fun to play on than the lower two routes. And I would rather that the upper two routes just never had bots on them. The detailing of the map, I like the ideas that it has. Um, like the, the the UFOs bringing the robots in and all the, the, the themes of the robots. Like it's really neat and it the, the map has a, a strong identity, um, which is something really good to have in a map a, a lot of maps don't really necessarily have an identity because they're just kind of parroting uh, an existing valve theme um and and not really doing anything unique that makes the map stand out and be interesting um the actual execution of it is okay um i like it it, it feels like a nighttime map and the gameplay space is generally lit up enough but i, I think there's more work to be done in terms of the lighting uh, all of it seems to be very generic white which kind of gets a, a little monotonous after a while i think you should introduce some yellows and some whites uh if if you make a you, there should be some contrast between the interior lighting and the exterior artificial lighting um also, the lighting at the bot entry areas could be improved because the actual like ground of the front area is lit up, but the ledges where the robots are coming in are not. And so the end result is, is that it's really difficult to actually see what bots are, are coming at you until they're on top of you. Uh, they're just kind of a, a black silhouette against a slightly less black background. Um, and then maybe their eyes are yellow. So you can tell there's a robot there, but you can't tell what robot it is because it's just, it, it's too dark. Um, and, and so that area needs to be a bit better so that uh, you, can, you can tell what's going on. All right, so now on to Relic. Uh, the gameplay of this map is very interesting and unique. Uh, it, it's, it's a very different map compared to sort of standard M MVM. And I think it's pretty successful in, in what it's trying to do. I, I, the concept of the map seems to be that it, it, there's a whole lot of interconnecting paths. Um, and as a result of that, there's a lot of different paths that the robots can take, which which is a, a really interesting way of sort of getting more replay value out of the map. But it also brings up a concern of like, how carefully are you really designing all these all these different routes? Um, I also think this maybe causes some undue confusion uh, with, the, with the players, and part of this might be that there's so many different routes that the bots can take uh, that it won't necessarily be intuitive like where the bots are actually going uh, when, when you're in the middle of the round. Um, and part of it might also just be the, the arrow placement. I noticed that it, it seemed like the hologram arrows, there weren't a lot of them uh, towards the hatch area of the map, and so when players are, are leaving spawn, uh, they might not actually see where the bomb path is, is is coming in so they just kind of forget that there's a bomb path and so they uh they don't set up the defenses at the front in their appropriate position because they're just not really thinking about that part of the map um and uh, so I, I would suggest you know, adding more arrow holograms and also maybe consider some sort of, of signage um that sort of tells players where the bots will go during a wave uh, just in case they forget or they, they weren't paying attention or, or whatever. One thing that I would also suggest is that um, I, I don't know if this was happening in the map. I think it was. Um, if you copied entities directly from the MVM example map, 
uh, there's a feature that like the, the 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 flag detection zone that sort of it triggers the alarm and says hey watch out the bomb's getting near the hatch um if you leave that the way that it is in mvm example then it will also clear all of the nav blockers that tell the bots what routes to take and so they will take any route to get to the hatch um I don't think that is a necessary part of any map. There's a lot of maps that I think suffered from this issue uh, where they just kept that feature in. Um, I think this one might suffer the most because it is so complex. So once the bomb reaches the hatch, there is no way to reorganize yourself. You basically have to sit at the hatch and wait for, for bots to come at you because there's so many different routes that you would have to pay attention to. If you're playing something like Manworks, there's only two places that bots are going to come from. That's relatively easy to pay attention to. And also the routes are kind of close together. This map is wide and there's like five different places that bots could be coming from. So it's really difficult uh, when that happens and it, 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 it is unfairly punishing. As for the, the layout of the map itself, I only played normal mode, where we mostly held at the front, and expert mode, which was a mixture of being able to defend in the middle and getting immediately shoved uh, to the hatch. Um, so it's a little bit difficult to know how I feel about specific parts of the map because we didn't end up using them a whole lot. Uh, but I, I think that what I said earlier is true about when you have so many of these routes that are so intricately connected, like how carefully are you designing each one, right? Um, I think there's some routes that are, are definitely more fun than others. So like when the robots uh, went immediately to the left and they took that, that higher path through the, the temple, um, that was fun towards the, the front of the map because we had the height advantage. And then once they had the height advantage, it was basically them just kind of walking down a path. And then as a player, like your, your best option is to kind of sit back and, and spam from a distance. Uh, because if you, if you run forward, it takes you a while to get there. Um, and, and you will most likely not really have anything you can take advantage of it's kind of a, a difficult spot to be in but if the bots took the right at the beginning like you had a, g a good amount of cover uh you, you could hold there it wasn't as easy as on the left but it, it you could do it but once the bots came through and they, they started taking like that cliff area and they go over the bridge towards the hatch like that area has a lot more cover a lot more height to use it was overall just kind of a, a more fun place to be playing in um and, and, and so I think that's one of the problems with the map is that when you have, I don't know, eight different routes, I don't know how many there, there actually are, it's pretty much inevitable uh, that some of those routes are going to be more fun than others. And once players pick up on that, they're immediately going to think, oh, shoot, we got this route. Now I'm not going to have as much fun. Why aren't we just, why aren't we just playing this other, this other route? Like, I wish I could just take control of the computer and say, I just want to play this route over and over because it's the, it's the one that I find the most fun. And I don't know if that's like an inherent truth about having that many routes. I think it's an inherent truth of having routes where one is going to be distinctly better than the other. And I think that's inevitably going to happen when you have that many routes that like one of those routes is going to be the best one and one of those routes is going to be the worst one. Seabed is one of my favorites from this contest, uh, not necessarily for its layout or how it plays, but because of the concept behind it. It has this really neat concept of having two simultaneous bot routes, or bot routes that uh, like leave a bob underneath underneath each other and interact in these interesting ways. And you know, not, neither one of the routes is really the the main route. Um, it's a really unique and interesting concept that I really really like a lot. Um, probably my favorite thing that come out of this contest really is that idea. I don't know how well this map capitalizes on that idea. There's parts of the, the layout that I do like, and there's parts of it that I do not. Um, but, but overall, I think it, it's a very, so, like the something here has been accomplished and needs to be paid attention to. When I first played this map, um, I had a lot of fun and I was I think it was because I was playing on a different pop file. Um, I, I, I think it was something that Hydrogen has made that we were playing for fun. And I really enjoyed that and, and sort of working my way around the way out and, and sort of weaving and bobbing. I was playing as medic, and so my, my job is essentially to keep everyone overhealed. And so basically I just spent the entire time navigating the map and trying not to get killed. 
uh, which is a lot of fun because the, the map is very intricate. When I played the map for a, a second time, that changed. And I think part of that is because I was not playing Medic. But a, part of it was also because we were playing a pop file that actually pushed us back on the map. The The pop file that I had played where I, I was having a lot of fun, uh, the furthest they ever pushed us back was the A gate. Uh, so we didn't even use like the entire back half of the map. Uh, and when we started playing... Um, a pop file that actually forced us to the back half of the map. That's when a lot of the flaws, I think, came to light, specifically with that back half of the map. I like the front half of the map. I do not like the back half of the map. Um, the area between A and B can be pretty tricky to navigate, specifically with the higher of the two water pools. Uh, when you're down in there, your two options are either... Well, you, I guess you have three options, but basically... If you run towards the robots, they're basically blind corners. You don't know if robots are coming at you, either going up the ramp because that's a blind corner immediately there. There might be a bot that just immediately takes you out or the lower route is same deal. Um, and so like the the, the smart non-risky uh, option is to run backwards and it's a really long walk. Um this also kind of continues with the rest of the map. Sort of from the hatch to B is less bad uh, in that regard, but it was still kind of difficult to play. I need to like think about why that is more, but it, I, I, it was a less enjoyable area to play. I think it's specifically it might have to be that there's that one route, that the upper route, it comes up and then runs all the way across uh, and then comes around to the bottom. Uh, getting onto that is kind of difficult, uh, because basically either you have to go all the way to the side and come up, or you have to be a scout, a soldier, or a demo man, or you have to upgrade your jump height. And I don't know that a lot of people are really going to be upgrading their jump height for that one part of the map that they might not use. As for the detailing of the map, I really like the the the, the broad moves of how the front half of the map is blue and it's kind of it's peaceful and, and kind of beautiful. And it's also colored for the, the team that owns that side of the map. And then towards the back half of the map, it, it switches to red, appropriate for the team, but also because of uh, the, the geological landform that's a part of. And also it, it creates a mood of, of urgency, like it, it, the mood of the map changes once it gets to the back and it becomes a, a lot more uh, intense, which is a really, really cool kind of detailing move. Uh, the detailing of the map itself, like at the fine level, like all the material choices, all of the specific bits of geometry, uh, it, it feels a little bit sloppy. Um, and I think this there's not a lot of consistency to the way that the, the this underwater facility has been put to put together. It's like every single piece of it is trying to be unique in the way that it's constructed. And, and because of that, it ends up coming off as, as kind of unprofessional. Like it, it's very, uh, it's just very strange looking um, in, in a way that I don't really appreciate. Up next is Sequoia. Uh, Sequoia is probably my favorite overall map of the contest. I said earlier, uh, the concept of seabed is probably, it, it is my favorite thing to come out of this contest, but for, for maps as a whole, things that I would want to, to come back and play again, Sequoia is definitely my number one pick. Um, the front of the layout has this really interesting dynamic where there's a, a high ground, uh, a decent amount of cover. The, the high ground is kind of small and it might be a little bit difficult to use. Um, but it, it has this weird dynamic about it where the, the robots will rather easily push you back. Um, but the robots eventually clear out. And then the, the, the way that you get back onto the high ground is immediately right at the, the choke coming out of the front. And so there's this kind of push and pull that happens through that area that that's really, uh, really interesting. Uh, the maps and gate mechanic, I think works pretty well. I think it's the most, or it, it, out of all the original concepts to come out of this contest, it's the one original concept that was executed the best. The, this map, it doesn't feel like it's a proof of concept for some idea that needs to be better done in another map. This map already did it. You could probably make a better map that has the same concept, but this one's good enough. It, it feels like a complete map that also has a new mechanic in it. 
I'm kind of curious about how much that gate uh, actually affects the, the gameplay of it because the alternate route is pretty far out of the way, but uh, the sort of the height advantages and, and cover surrounding it are maybe a little bit difficult to access. Plus, it's really far away from the, where the players actually are. So I'm, I, I'm definitely curious about how much it, it sort of affects how much the players succeed, but it, it still alters the way that the map plays. Like it definitely makes the bots take longer and that, 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 uh, that it gives the map another dynamic, even though there really is only one route from, from start to hatch, it, it changes how the map plays every time. Uh, the, the main thing that I don't like about this map is the, 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 the way that you get from the hatch area to the middle of the map. Um, and this is because there's sort of one main route. Uh, it, it's a, a slope that comes up and it, it's sort of at this blind corner. Um, if, if robots are coming from the, the long route coming around, um, then they are coming immediately at a blind corner. And if they're coming from the water route, then they sort of come up up, up, up a ramp. Either way, you're, you're not really sure what to expect. You can't see ahead of you before you go up this ramp, and it, it makes it sort of a, a risky route to be taking. The only alternative is this route that's, that's off to the side. And if you take that route, it's so far out of the way that you're maybe not going to end up at a, a good position to be attacking robots. There might be robots actually walking directly in front of that doorway, making it really not a useful route at all. As for the detailing, it, it, it's good. It's not amazing, but it's good. Uh, it, it's fairly standard alpine. It has these giant sequoia trees um, that, that mesh with the existing assets pretty well. Um, and, and the... It, it, it conveys the feeling of a, of a dense forest pretty well. I don't think it conveys it quite as well as Landfall. Um, I, I think there's more to be done with the fog settings and, and maybe with the lighting and, and the overall color palette because it, it feels... It's using the color palette of sort of a bright, uh, like a lumberyard sort of alpine map, but it, it I feel like it wants to be moodier. Um, and maybe that's me just projecting my, my own... Uh, sort of how I, I feel about it. Um, but I think it, it, it's the color palette isn't quite right. Um, and there's also some, some details that are kind of missed that, that I think you could work with. Like the, um, the, the bomb pit is sort of like at the end of a drainage path. Like there's a, there's this, this concrete sort of trench that leads to it. And it feels like it would be a prime position for like a, a drainage route, um, but like the ground isn't dipped in or anything to actually capture the water and there's no staining. So it doesn't really, it doesn't really look like a drainage path. There, there's details like that in various parts of the map that just kind of got glossed over because you, you know, you were rushing the detailing to get it done. The next map is space post, uh, space post, the layout of this map. I'm still not sure how I feel about it. It's weird because I've played this with two different groups of people. I, I played it with the, uh, the the potato MVM sort of night crew. Um, and then I, I played it with another group of people. Uh, some, some people I knew, some people I didn't. Uh, ba basically a random group, may maybe what you would expect uh, an average group to be that's playing your map. When I was playing it with the potato MVM group, uh, we had sort of, I mean, everyone there is good at MVM, right? Um, and when I was playing with that group, it was very enjoyable. I was playing as Pyro, I was playing, uh, I, I don't remember if I was Flog or if, uh, I, it doesn't matter. Um, I had a lot of fun in, in just upgrading my, my run speed and getting all my resistances so I could just run around really quickly and kill robots. And, and the map really enabled me to play like that because there's a lot of routes that allow you to get from point A, point a to, to point B in, in a myriad of ways. And ha being able to run really fast, of course, enables you to do that effectively. Uh, then I played it with another group, and I was playing as Demo Pan or Soldier. I don't remember. Um, and uh, I, I should say, both both of these times we were playing on the uh, advanced mission. Um, the The second group of people I played it with, it was absolutely miserable. Um, it might have been one of the worst tests that I've actually been a part of. We beat the first wave, and I think that was it. We had to skip every single other one because... They just completely kicked our ass. Um, so I don't know how to feel about it because I, I guess when I was playing it with a group that was doing well, I had fun. And when I was playing with a group that was not, it was incredibly not fun in a way that felt unfair. Um, and I don't really know why. I think the co conclusion that I've come to is that Having complexities in a layout or, or having a layout that 
uh, players can learn to take advantage of stuff that is not immediately obvious to them. Like that is that that is something that you should build into a map. It, it offers more depth. It offers a player. Uh, more than there is just at the surface, more than just the first time that they play it, repeating the same thing over and over. But I think that if you are going to try to appeal to a a general audience, a broad audience, which I, I think most of the, I think I feel like that's sort of the the basis that we're supposed to judge these maps on. Um, you can't make that the entirety of the map. If if you, I, I would say anything under like a, an expert level uh, a mission that you should be able to beat it if you're pretty good even if you don't know the way out just going entirely off of instinct and going off of what's intuitive you should be able to beat a map if you're pretty good um on, on like advanced level or or lower um and i don't think that this map offers that i, I feel like you need to understand the layout on a uh, on a on a pretty deep level to be able to beat the advanced missions and i i see that as a flaw and that of course raises the question of like what if the advanced pop file is just too difficult and and i i don't i don't know it's hard to say but i think that when we were when we were playing the map as a, as a group that did not really as, as a group of people who mostly did not understand the map we were seeing the map for the first time um they expressed that they were really not able to understand the map. And I, I feel like that is definitely a negative thing that they felt like they could not take advantage of what the map had to offer them because they just didn't understand what the, what the map was trying to get them to do. As for the aesthetics of the map, they're, they're okay. Um, I, I, I think it, it's passable and you're, you're working with the moon base assets, which are sort of an incomplete pack of, of, of props and, and, uh, textures and whatnot. Um, it, it, it works. Um, there's parts of it that sort of come off as being a little bit amateur, like the, uh, there, there's like a window into this weird, I don't know, arboretum kind of place where there's a waterfall. That room just looks really bad. Um, there's the, the dump truck prop, which a lot of people called out as feeling out of place. And I, I don't know that it's certainly unrealistic to have a dump truck on the moon, uh, but it, it, it does look out of place. Like it doesn't match with any of the other assets. Um, and also sort of the, the moon rock walls are very obviously uh, like flat. They don't, they don't look uh, realistic as rock walls. Tie-in is next on my list. It's, it's a map that, I wish I liked more because I think the detailing is is really good. I'm going to talk about that after I talk about the layout, which is the part of this map that I don't like very much. So with with the layout, the the, the front of the area, the front of the map is good. Uh, there's sort of a a wood porch that's set back from where the bots drop in, and it's a far enough distance away that damage fall off sort of makes it a, a decent position. There's there's no cover on it, and I would appreciate some cover, but it, it, overall it works. Um, and then there's rocks that are further forward in the in the water area. Um, and that offers a, a, a fairly interesting sort of area to run around. Um, that area is good. Um, and then the, the bots will push out of there. And then you get to the point where there's there's two routes that, that uh, come between that, that intro sauna area and sort of the city, city part of the map. Um, and that, that offers a, an interesting dynamic. And then the bots come out onto the street. And uh, if they take the... Uh, the the route immediately to them that, that goes by the uh, the lake, that route is incredibly unfun. Uh, there's not a lot of cover, and there's not a lot of area to the side that was that I found particularly useful. Because uh, usually what happens is uh, there's two things that can happen as you're falling back. One is that you fall back and you survive, and so you're you're running away from the bots and you have time to get into a new position. Uh, or you die and then you you have to come back if you die it's the, like the worst possible thing that can happen at that moment because then you have an incredibly long distance to walk back and you don't really have any good ways to quickly gain a positional advantage there's some cover to the side not very much and where it is it isn't particularly useful and there's like one area of height advantage and you really can't get to it because by the time you would actually walk all the way up to the staircase that gets you up onto that platform, 
the bots are already in your face. So you can't use it. So basically, whenever I get to that point in the map, it's a matter of just waiting for them, really. It, it, it's very difficult to approach them at any sort of distance without getting clobbered by them, especially on, on the, the harder ways for this where the, the bots are doing more damage. It, it feels like you basically just come to the come to the bottom slope of that road and you wait for the bots to come at you. And you can shoot at them, but it's not going to do a whole lot because of damage fall off. If the bots take the further route, the route that sort of goes through the middle of a town, it has buildings on the other side, that is a much more fun route to be playing on. It's still not great. I, I, I don't think that I enjoy playing on it a whole lot. And, and really, I need, to, I need to play it more. But when I'm playing this map, it, it, it's like cro I'm crossing my fingers that it, it takes that back route because it is always just the more fun one to play on it it has more positional advantages there's a bridge that goes over the road there's more height advantages over it uh there's this pocket of cover where the the road kind of comes to a curve and there's a a a, uh, a chain link fence and then there's some good pickups behind it like it's a it, it, there's some decent spots in that part of the map and it, it plays decently but it only happens like one third of the time and i think that's a really big issue that i'm like I'm hoping that the, the map picks the route that I want to play on because one of them is bearable and the other one just sucks. Um, and I'm, I'm speaking with, with uh, what's the word, exaggeratory language right now to express how I feel about it. But I, I, I'm talking about it this way because I really want it to be good and that... I really want it to be good because of, of the, the detailing of this map. The detailing of this map is really really fucking good um like the the overall execution of it like the the detailing of itself it, it's it's original and it is executed well and that's about all you can ask for in a, a tf2 map like if you are hitting those two beats you are doing incredibly well and this map is doing incredibly well behind uh, because of that but on top of that like this map does what source is not supposed to be able to do. It's an organic layout that has these these roads that come in at strange angles. Everything is non orthogonal. Like I can understand how the buildings are put together. Like I know how to do that that sort of stuff. I have no idea how the roads are put together. Like that is beyond me. How that brushwork is even put together to get the displacements and that orientation. Like this map is a technical achievement. Um, probably the, the greatest achievement to come out of this, this contest, something that I, I really enjoy. Um, it, it's, it, it is unparalleled by anything else that I have seen aside from maybe a, a Gary's mod map called fork. And that's an entirely different beast. And it was made for, for other purposes, but still like this is uh, to me as, as a mapper, this is a really impressive piece of work purely because of how difficult it was to put together. So Waterfront is the last on this list. Um, this is a map that I, I, I was able to find some fun on it. Uh, parts of it were, were a little frustrating. Uh, it, I don't know if it's something that I want to return to, uh, but, it, but it was okay. Um, the layout of it is kind of weird, and I think a lot of, it, a lot of that weirdness comes from the fact that the, the there, there's two different routes and they are very different from one another if the robots uh continue taking the the outdoor route then it plays sort of like a, a standard mvm map where you you have to hold the front and then once they they start pushing like there's too many robots to to, to be killing consistently you fall back and it, it's very natural and it, it, it feels the way that a standard mvm map does if they take the other route if they go indoors the the distance from the indoor choke like that that doorway before they get into the the the, the sloped sort of walkway that then goes down into the giant tall water room uh the distance between the the bot drop off and that door is really small so when you're holding the front it feels wrong it feels like you are sort of uh beating the map at its own game i guess it feels like you're abusing the map because you're essentially just spamming one point on the ground over and over and that is what is sort of keeping the robots at bay that's how you're holding the front there isn't a whole lot of of dynamic to it also like that that's just not a, a very interesting way to hold the front you're just kind of shooting the same spot over and over and moving around so that you don't get hit um 
the other issue that I have with this, and this is kind of a hypothetical thing. I don't know that I ever actually saw this happen, but I think that also has to do with sort of the, the, the structure of the advanced waves and how there's only three of them. But you can't really balance the waves to the map specifically um, because there, there, there's things like, you know, how close is a particular choke to the front? Like how long does it take bots to, to drop off the wedge and then get to that area? And because the two way, the, the, the two different bot paths are so distinctly different in that regard, you can't really uh, put any thought into the, the waves and how they might react to one or the other. You kind of have to design with both of those possibilities in mind. So I don't know, like say a, a giant medic comes in if they take the interior route, that giant medic is immediately going into a very like funneled hallway that only has an opening on, on either side of it. And that might make it easier or harder to eliminate that giant medic uh, as quickly as you can, as compared to the giant medic taking the other route where they're in a very exposed area that has a number of, of height advantages and pieces of cover around them. Uh, depending on what happens in the pop file and, and, and all of that, it could play very differently depending on which route it takes. And I don't know that that's necessarily a good thing because it, it makes it more difficult to design a pop file specifically for the map. As for the detailing of the map, uh, I, I've talked about it a little bit before in the thread of the map. Um, I had a lot of complaints about the lighting um, and, I, I, and, and complaints about like sort of marking off where, where playable spaces and whatnot. And uh, a lot of that stuff got addressed. Uh, which I mean, it, it, I mean, it made me happy, obviously, because it means my feedback is worth something. Uh, but no, I, I think I think the map de definitely did improve. The lighting is is definitely better, and 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 marking off where playable spaces is, is done better. Um, it feels a lot like uh, what we call vile style, which is sort of like you just put frames around everything, and that's how you make it visually interesting. Um, and, it, and that became sort of a coined term because it looked really bad. Um, but this map has such a, a consistent color scheme to it. And it, it's done in a way that, that looks correct and somewhat realistic that honestly, I don't mind. Like it, it looks nice. Um, it somehow doesn't quite feel like TF2. And I think that has to do with the way that, that everything is framed. But it, it has sort of its own style that I, I think... It, it does it pretty successfully. Um, as for like the narrative of the map, this is something that has come up a whole lot, sort of the, the lack of realism and like, what the hell is this building? Um, I have to agree with those points. Uh, I, other people are going to make them. Other people have already made them. There's weird stuff about like how there's, there's pallets leaned up against walls, but they're in the middle of a water pool. And also like, what is that water pool even doing there? Why is it there? What is this? What, what, why is this useful to the building that it's a part of and, and, and whatnot? It didn't stick out to me a whole lot, but it definitely does feel a little weird. As for the pop files specifically, I wanted to talk to about, uh, about them a little bit. There's endurance missions, which I, I think are an okay idea. I didn't enjoy them a whole lot for their endurance aspect, but I, it, it seems to work. Uh, and it, it the, like the trappings around it, like sort of the, the, the break in the middle of the wave where the forward upgrade station uh, opens, like it, that all works. And it's, it's nice. Um, the problem that I have with it mostly has to do with the fact that it's in a short map. Um, and it's a really strange combination. Um, when Valve made wave 666, uh, which is sort of the, the other endurance mission that I know of, they intentionally picked Coal Town. Of the three maps that they had at the time, they picked Coal Town because it was the longest, it was the biggest. Um, and there's there's multiple reasons for this. One of them is because it just sort of gives them the most space to work with. It effectively allows them to make the most difficult wave because the players can fall back the most out of any of those maps. Um, it also means that if, if the players mess up and they, they lose a lot of ground, uh, they're not immediately at the hatch. Uh, which is what happens with this map is, is that if you lose, you don't have to lose a whole lot of ground before you're immediately at the hatch. So it, it kind of feels like you spend a lot of the map just spamming the front as hard as you can so that you don't have to fall back very much. Uh, and that that's sort of what has evolved out of trying to make these waves be balanced in a map that is so short. The other complaint is, is somewhat similar, but it has to do with sort of like the experience of playing the map. 
is that when you have such a long endurance mission and you're using the entire map front to back as, as it goes because the, the robots are, are pushing you back and then you kill the robots and, you, and then you can push back. Uh, when you have such a short map, the players aren't really visiting a whole lot of different unique spaces. They're kind of in the same area the entire time. And so what ends up happening is that you have this 10 minute wave that goes on and on and the players are in the same spots pretty much the entire time. There's maybe two or three different areas that they actually visit in this entire 10 minutes. And so what ends up happening is they're basically doing the same the same things over and over. They're taking advantage of the same spots of the map in the same ways because there's just not a whole lot of map for them to take advantage of.